Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Yeah, I did that. I'm wearing all my Falcon stuff because we're two and two, but when you're the Falcons, two and two is like being four and zero oh if you're the Chiefs. All right, so let's jump into my analysis, and we have an interesting somewhat interesting staggered monday night football slate uh at 7 30 we have the tennessee titans going to the injured and depleted uh, from a quarterback perspective miami dolphins despite that it really just shows you know how the nfl and miami feels about uh tennessee uh the dolphins are still actually favorites they're two and a half point at home favorites the over under is terrible i think it's like 37 and a half at the time of this recording so i mean i don't know what does what does that equal out to like 20 to 17 or 20 to 18 so they don't even think that either team will get uh you know more than two touchdowns so a uh, very low over under and then you have a far more intriguing game you have the seattle seahawks going to detroit it's an indoor game uh playing the lions the lions are four point favorites and i think at the time of this recording the over under is 46 and a half so what does that mean for dfs why am i even telling you that well i'm telling you that because if you make a lineup and it has more Tennessee and Dolphins players than Seattle and Detroit players, it does not mean that you're wrong. It just means that you're bucking the system and being contrarian. And if that's what you're trying to do, then go with that 7-3 lineup, Tennessee, Miami to Seattle, Detroit. But if you make a lineup and it's 7-3 that way and you weren't trying to do it, Maybe you should think about that because there's a reason <laughs> why uh, there's a reason why Vegas thinks that the Tennessee Miami game is going to be low scoring. They're not right. Uh, most of the time they're right, but they're not right all the time. So just something to consider. That's why I kind of bring up the over under for these videos because this is DFS and not betting, but you just kind of got to know what you're getting yourself into. All right. So with these two game slates, we talked about it last week. These can be fun or they can be a nightmare. We know DFS is so unpredictable. I was crying yesterday, just, just crying. How did Rasheed Rice get injured on an interception? I mean, he was trying to do his thing, bumped into Patrick Mahomes. Of course, Patrick Mahomes is Superman. He didn't get injured at all. Rasheed Rice probably torn ACL. Torn ACL. He, and, you know, you're like, Walter, why do you care so much? You're a Falcons fan. He was on my fantasy football team, y'all. My fantasy football season is over. I mean, you can't find a Rasheed Rice replacement on the waiver wire. I mean, I'm just, I'm sad. But that's a part of DFS. That happened in the first quarter. Ruined, I think, on the main slate, not as many lineups, but definitely on the afternoon slate. And if you were playing Showdown, I mean, it, it just ruined most lineups. But... That's DFS, and that also shows you and just confirms what I say all the time. Anyone can be faded. You know, before a kickoff, fading Rasheed Rice, the, I think in my showdown contest, the 26% of people that faded Rasheed Rice, they were being contrarian, and they might even, you could say, crazy. But this is football. This is DFS. We don't know all of the parameters. We, you know, we do the research. Uh, you know, whether we buy from someone else, look at content or whatever we do, and then we put the best lineups out there, but then crazy things can always happen. And definitely, most definitely on a two game slate. So last week's two game slate was a fun one. It was a pretty good uh, week for me. Uh, where I messed up on was the defense. Uh, I think I had the commander's defense and the Bengals went out there and just did their thing. Joe Burrow looked much better. Uh, but overall, I did have Jaden Daniels uh, starting, but Burrow actually, I think, was in optimal lineup. So last week wasn't a bad week for me on this Monday night, this little two-game slate. And some of my best games that I've ever had have been Tennessee uh, with Levis and going against the Dolphins when they had two. So these kind of slates I've done really well on historically, but I don't like how they stagger it for watching purposes, but I just think most people are just gonna spend most of their time watching Seattle at Detroit. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do today, I'm not gonna have my slides, you know, all the things I normally do. Uh, because it's a small slate, I'm just gonna walk you through my thought process. And we can start with the quarterbacks. And this is very interesting because we don't have one of those, you know, expensive, you know, Josh Allen uh, type quarterbacks on this slate. So um, the, the savings that you might get from, you know, like yesterday, I started Sam Darnold in the main uh, contest. So the difference between him and some of the higher salary players allowed me to put some better players in my lineup. It's not the case here. So I can just, I, I'm going to go in reverse order. The quarterback that I hate the most uh, is Huntley. We've seen how this dude played when he was with the Ravens. Um, I mean, he could obviously bust out for, you know, a 79 yard, you know, scampering touchdown. Maybe he can he can catch the Tennessee defense slipping and get a ball, um, you know, to I mean, he has he has Tyreek Hill as a target. So that could happen. But I, I really don't like Huntley. And so so the really to Le Levis. I mean, he's my my second least liked um, like quarterback. I mean, you know, four touchdowns, five interceptions, three lost fumbles, and because he has three lost fumbles, this is why I love the Dolphins, <laughs> the Dolphins defense. Three lost fumbles, all those interceptions. So to me, at the quarterback position, for most of us, when you know, in our primary lineups, not the lineup number eleven and twelve through fifteen, I really think it boils down to whether you're looking at ceiling or whether you're looking at floor. So if you're trying to pick the safest uh, quarterback, then it is Jared Goff. Uh, he has a floor. But if you watch Lions games, they love to shorten the game by that. What I mean by that is having running plays because we know that when you have a running play, the clock does not stop unless the running back goes out of bounds. So that actually shortens the game as opposed to uh, pass play a lot of time. I mean, it's the majority of the time, depending on who's the quarterback, uh, is an incompletion and the clock stop, uh, stops. So the Lions are about shortening the game. So if you just watch Jared Golf games over, uh, over the years, if they get ahead, and they're, you know, the favorite to get ahead, they're gonna shorten the game and just give the ball to their running backs, which is a story for later on in this video. But Jared Goff definitely has the safest floor. But on this slate, if you're going for the quarterback with the highest ceiling and just barely, it's definitely Geno Smith. He hasn't gone off uh, this year so far, but if the script holds and he's behind, he does have the wide receivers and the talent to actually have the highest ceiling. So really just depends what you're thinking. Floor, Jared Goff, ceiling, you have Geno Smith. All right, so let's go with running backs. And very interesting. So HN, I mean, had a bad game. Uh, I mean, when, with Huntley, I think his his um, his chances of going back, regressing back to the mean in a good way are better. We can see that the last game, 2.7 you know, yards per carry, 8.8 .8 fantasy points. But we saw how he did the first two games. We know a part of that was with Tua. Um, so I'm not necessarily afraid of HN, but um, my favorite two running backs are actually Gibbs and Montgomery. As I've said before in these videos and been proven right at those times, you can start both of these running backs in your lineup. We can see that Gibbs has been just so consistent. Uh, I mean, with his, when we look at his uh, short, you know, we only have three game logs, but then you can also see it has an impact at starting Montgomery. So uh, I really think that you can start one or both of these running backs. Uh, the Walker Charbonnet situation is very interesting. Charbonnet has looked really good uh, with Walker out, which makes me question, even when he was the pure backup, he still was, was getting, you know, double digit fantasy points. But I'm really curious to see how this distribution goes. We know what the coach is saying, but, you know, when it comes to actual hot hand and what might actually happen, and plus they're playing a really tough defense, this scares me. You know, the Walker Charbonnet scares me more because of the uncertainty than the defense. And also they're scripted to be behind. So there are a lot of things that are pointing me away from Walker and Charbonnet. I think Pollard uh, is sneaky. He has a good matchup. Um, he did have a not so good game against Green Bay, but things got away from them really quickly. Um, but I think he's more of the player we saw in game one and game two. So definitely if I have to rank who I like, I, I like Gibbs and Montgomery equally followed by HN and then Pollard as far as the running backs. But we know on these little small slates and showdown contests it's the backup running backs and the backup tight ends that can sometimes win you that guap. So I also like Spears 
or for Tennessee, you know, kind of the third down back. He is going to get those PPR, you know, targets. And you can see that he's caught all 10 of his targets. So in the sneaky play, I like Spears. All right, let's go to wide receivers. <sighs> Has it ever been contrarian to start Tyreek Hill? I mean, 7,900. I mean, the quarterbacks he's had. I mean, this looks like a typo. The difference, the difference in the Dolphins between when Tua is quarterbacking, Tua should just win the MVP. <laughs> he should win the team MVP after these two games. I mean, this is crazy. <sighs> I cannot recommend Tyreek Hill. I understand why you would do it. He's very skilled. Maybe Huntley will be better. It's contrarian, but I I, I can't recommend it. My my favorite. A wide receiver is definitely DK Metcalf. He has a good matchup. He's played really well this year, 23-31. We had that dud game to start the year, but I think he's closer to the person that we saw against Miami than what we saw in Denver. If I can't start Tyreek, I don't know how you, you play Waddle. Um, now, especially considering that you have a stud, you have a rising stud, a sneaky stud. I know his last game wasn't the best, but the Lions have really started to believe in in Williams, and I think he's closer to what we saw in game one and two than what we saw against Arizona. So I really like Williams. Obviously, Amara St. Brown is the safest uh, pick <laughs> on this slate. We know that he is a PPR monster and just a really safe pick. Uh, Calvin, Calvin Ridley and, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, once again, they're, they're being uh, hampered by their quarterback, not necessarily their own skills. So there's going to be inconsistencies, but I think both Ridley and Hopkins could easily, you know, have one of their ceiling games in the 19s or 20s. So definitely they're in that second tier of wide receivers for this slate. Uh, Smith and Jigba, top 10 last name, really like him, has a good matchup. Um, definitely, if you're doing a, a Geno Smith stack, you probably want to put Smith and Jigba in your lineups. Nada, I'm, the arrow's pointing down on Lockett. And the only reason the arrow's pointing down on Boyd is just because of the quarterback. Uh, all right, let's go to tight ends. And this is kind of a nasty mess. This is a mess, nasty mess. We know that Laporta has been screwing our lineups these first three weeks. And if you're in fantasy football, it's really been screwing your lineup. So Laporta has just been giving us old gut punch. The old, you know, when I was uh, when I was in high school and it was your birthday, um, <laughs> you didn't want anybody to know it's your birthday because they gave you them birthday licks. And I remember one time this guy, uh, you know, got birthday licks and it hit him in, a guy hit him in the stomach and it, you know, it knocked the wind out of him and he actually he actually passed out he, he's alive but you know he got he got punched in that stomach and got you know he passed out but like i said he's alive but that's what it feels like when you put sam laporte in your lineup these first three weeks you survive you're alive but it's like a good gut punch uh to the stomach on your birthday getting those uh getting those uh <laughs> dekalb county atlanta georgia uh birthday licks so uh that being said we know laporta is very very talented but we also know that there's only one football and the lions have a lot of options so very scary to start him i like a conquo um a little better well a lot better because of the salary um he hasn't had an amazing game but we know that with, it, with his athleticism and his salary he could definitely go off and be a difference maker i think fant He's been playing for Seattle for a few years. A very, very safe choice. Gets a good amount of, well, relatively safe choice. I mean, none, none of these tight ends make me feel all warm and you know, fuzzy and cuddly. None of these. But, you know, out of the ones, I really think a Conquo and Fan are my favorites. But obviously with skill level, it's going to be a Laporta. And then the defenses. So, um, hands down, uh, the best defense to play is the Dolphins. We talked about Levis, you know, losing... Uh, three fumbles. What, 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 was, what was terrible stats? Um, five interceptions and three fumbles. So eight turnovers through three games. That is uh, that is delicious uh, from a defensive perspective. But the Titans going up against Huntley is also nice. I think the most contrarian, obviously, uh, defense will be the Seahawks. But I say this all the time. When it comes to defense, there's so much luck and, and randomness involved that, and with the salary difference, I don't, I, I can see pros and cons of all of them. We can look at my Falcons yesterday. Nobody picked the Falcons. Well, somebody didn't. They won a million dollars, but <laughs> very few people picked the Falcons defense yesterday. And what did it take? It took a muff punt, you know, to get them into the winning lineup. But who, 
nobody saw that coming. He shouldn't even try to, you know, he should have did a fair catch. A muff punt on the five-yard line by the by the Saints, you can't predict that. So that happens in defenses. So I'm really fine with all of them. All right, let's look at my thought process lineup. And uh yeah, I'm going, I'm going with safety. I'm going with Geno Smith. Uh I like having I like both Gibbs and Montgomery. Uh, as far as uh, what they've shown as far as their floor and ceiling. Uh, I'm going with uh, the stud Williams, and I'm going with St. Brown. So I know you're like, man, Walt, that's a lot of Detroit players. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like it's going to be a high-scoring game. The over-under is 46 and a half, but I can see it going more than that. I know if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable with this, if you're like, I don't know about this, I mean, I can see you, you know, putting in Charbonnet or Walker. I just... I have some concerns about how that's going to play out. Uh, I have in Jigba being a little bit different. We talked about these two game slates. You don't have to be insanely different, but I mean in Jigba, not uh, Metcalf, and then we going with Fant, you know, and then Spears with the uh, the backup running back, and then going with the Titans defense instead of the Dolphins defense. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.